And yes, we're going to concentrate on fame now. You might remember a couple of weeks ago that we met two of the stars of fame and uh, two different actors who played key parts in the series uh, are now my guests. Uh, P.R. Paul, who played Montgomery, and also Cynthia Gibb, who in the later series played a character called Holly. Fantastic series. I absolutely love fame. Uh, and I met the two of them virtually, of course, by Zoom, because that's what we do these days. And the reason I was chatting to them is that later this year, there will be the Fame UK Reunion 2022, the 40th anniversary. Can you believe that? It was 40 years ago since uh, Fame was massive on our screens. Uh, so the people who will be coming along are people like Valerie Landsberg, who played Doris, Lee Carreri, who played Bruno, Carlo Imperato, Danny, P.R. Paul Montgomery, you're going to meet him in a minute, Cynthia Gibb, who was Holly, and two or three other actresses and actors like Loretta Chandler, for example, who we also met along with Valerie last week. So I started by asking P.R. Paul, and you'll hear from Cynthia Gibb as well in just a moment, about how much of an impact the series of fame had had on him and his life. Not only am I proud, I'm so grateful to uh, have been a part of it. It's who knew that 40 years later, anybody would care, much less, you know, come to a concert that we're doing. It's, it's certainly, so, certainly mind boggling to me. I, I get to speak to a lot of sports people in, in my life and and often when you speak to somebody they have a defining moment in their sporting career and it doesn't matter who interviews them or which fan meets them they always say tell us about that moment I keep, and you keep living that moment and in terms of fame I mean I know you've had a life and a career but in terms of fame your time on the show was relatively short-lived um, and yet it seems like it was a defining moment for you. Is that true? Is it, was it a real defining moment for you? You know, I think getting the job was the defining moment for me. Not necessarily being, uh-oh, who's here? Is, is, <laughs> is this Gib here? We've got, a, we've got somebody coming in now to join us as well. This will be uh, Miss Cynthia Gibb, who uh, of course played Holly in, uh, in Fame. So uh, two famous together. Hi, you know, thanks Cynthia, for joining us. Cynthia, I, if you're going to constantly be late like this, I cannot work like this. <laughs> All right. You want to know why I was late? And I'm, and I'm even going to hold you up another couple minutes. My husband, Lee. Lee. Hi, everybody. He, hey. he's, pretend, up, he's pretending to be the galloping gourmet, and he's oh, yeah. making this very... It, like extravagant okay. and and complicated cake, and he needs me to separate the eggs, here's the egg yolks of the egg. The cake I'm making. Cool. So this is like this. What's the baking show in in England? What's the name of that? Uh, Great British Bake Off. So this is the uh, this is the the American version of British Bake Off. All right, go. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've got. We're gonna. I'll do a little lesson in oh, separating eggs from egg whites while you. Can, talk can you do? Can you do, you do? you crack eggs with one hand? No, no. All right. I'm not that good, Paul. Can you do I, that? I, I can. I can throw an egg with one hand. I, I. I can barely crack an egg with two hands. How about you, Ian? Are you a chef? I made Viennese schnitzel earlier today, but of course we're later in the evening. <laughs> Wait, you really did make schnitzel? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is being recorded. I might have a new career. <laughs> right now, right here, this, this might be it. The trick is not to get the yolk in the white because then it, it won't make meringue. Even if you have like a minuscule drop of yolk in the white. All right, time is up. Put your spatulas down now. <laughs> All right, Ian, I'm so sorry. I, I am I'm finishing up right now. I'm very I'm just so delighted I've got the two of you to speak to me, so that's fine by me. <laughs> <laughs> this one didn't go so well. All right, I just got one to go. Anyway, hi. Hi. It's good to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Hope we'll get to actually see you in the flesh when you come over in September. Sue Sue is a hero, right, Paul? I mean, what she was able to pull off. Oh, you got one to go. Sorry. You know, no, we're trying to do a professional interview here. Come on. No, Lee, come on. 
Uh, yes, we're, we're we're very excited to uh, to go to England, and um, Sue is Sue should just wear a cape. That's all she should wear, and with a big S on it, you know, because what she's doing is. If any, if somebody asked any one of us to put together a show like that, we'd go, "Oh no, I don't think so. That's not happening." She's yeah. a superwoman. Well, it seems that the UK has is, is, is took fame to its heart. I, I, I don't know, maybe more even than your own country. Is that true? Do you think? In terms of uh, being loyal fans for decades, my goodness. I mean, I think I don't know who's out there in America who's still following us. Well, I mean, they're on the they're on the fame um, Facebook pages, I guess. But but yes, I mean, they, I, we just are we are just made to feel so welcome when we do our UK trips and and, and Italy too. I I mean, it's it's it really is very moving to me that that we get welcomed so wholeheartedly. And it's so much fun. It's so much fun to be able to to continue to get together. That doesn't happen in most television series, right? People go to work, the series is, you know, is canceled, whatever, and you move on. And yeah, this is this is really an extraordinary thing. I mean, Cynthia, you've had a career when you look at your CV and, the, and you're still very active now. Fame is still very much part of your life, isn't it? I don't mean the TV series, I just mean the entity that is fame. Um, is fame all it's cracked up to be, you know, like the, the, the lyrics of the song? Is it, is it what you hoped for and is it everything that everybody imagines it? Hindsight is twenty twenty, right? For me, in hindsight, fame is, it was and is um, so much bigger a, a gift and kind of a, um, a milestone in, in my career. And if I could go back now and do it again, I, you know, you, I, I'd pay to go back and do it again because I have a gratitude for it now that's beyond what I had then. And I knew it was something very special back then. I knew I was very lucky and, um, and, and, you know, I kept looking over my shoulder, make sure, like, you know, I was pretty sure they'd figure out that I didn't belong and they'd kick me out, you know, kind of like keep my head down. Um, but then being able to do the reunions is, uh, I, I say this to Paul, I say it to the others all the time, it's the gift that keeps on giving. But you've but done really so was, Sorry. No. I was going to say, you've done so many things in your career. You've won awards and all that sort of thing. And yet you look back on a TV series from the 80s, which I've got to admit, I, I watched again during lockdown, the whole thing from beginning to end, even the episodes that have not been shown in, on the UK TV in the height of its popularity. And the storylines, to me, still hold up and still have a lot of virtue in them. In fact, I would go as far as to say that TV programs today don't have such important messages in them. Is that the reason why, Cynthia, you, you look back on that era, despite the awards and all the other things that you've done, and say it's still special? It, it's not just the storylines, and, and I will give all that credit to Bill Blinn. I mean, Paul, we were both really blessed to work with Bill. He was our executive producer. Unquestionably, what a, what a great man. He, he really, really was um, at the, the heart of the integrity of that show, the, the quality of the storylines, creating three-dimensional characters. Um, I, I think in addition, I would answer your question just say it was everything. I mean, if you weren't on set, which by the way, we were on the old MGM lot. You know, we, we, we were in this place where history was made, so many iconic movies and movie stars. Um, so it's kind of hallowed ground to just go to work every day. But if we weren't on one of the many extraordinary sets, you know, it's like a, full, a full-size auditorium, full-size New York City street, a full-size, you know, hallway with lockers and classrooms off of it. Um, we were in the recording studio. Or we were in the dance rehearsal, or we were making one of the first music videos that ever, you know, was on MTV. It was, you know, except for Paul. Well, we were in the bathroom drinking. One of the, one of those things. <laughs> we weren't. 
Just we, kidding. We waited to after hours for that. But um, it, it just, uh, it, I can't imagine a job that was more fulfilling creatively. I will say I did not feel worthy and I did not feel ready when I jumped into that show at all. I, I, any moment that I was not at work, I was either in an acting class or a singing lesson or a dance class. And I kept that up for years. And, and I, about 10 years after the show, after I had left the show, I was like, okay, I'm ready now. <laughs> I'm ready for my close up. <laughs> I'm, re I'm ready now. I got this. But um, so talented. And, and getting back to your question about the, the other actors, like the adult actors and the guest stars, it, the casting on the show and forget about myself being a part of it, the people they cast on that show, we, I didn't realize how lucky I was until I, I walked away and just was like, wow. We, I mean, just legendary people were cast in that show constantly. I also love, I, you know, I, I would love to say that, that in the last handful of years, you know, we've had all of these, progressive movements in our country anyway. Black Lives Matter, um, diversity in casting is, is prominent now in Hollywood. Um, look back to 1983, Bill Blinn and, you know, the, all of the people in charge of, of creating that television series were way ahead of the curve. You know, we were a little slice of America you know, we just, we represented in every way, you know, all of the different aspects of America on and off, you know, in character and out of character. It was a really, really diverse group. And I, I, I found, I, I found myself just growing so much as a result of being in this amazing mix of people from all walks of life. All I can say is as a viewer, uh, these days, I'm a lot, a lot more aware of the things that you just talked about. But at the time, it was just absorbed naturally. It didn't matter what the cultural background was, the religion, the skin color. None of that mattered in fame because all the characters were likable. All of you were buddies and you felt like you were our buddies. And that, to me, that is the best way of showing true diversity, isn't it? Yeah, well, coming, I don't, you know, it didn't strike me. I don't know about you, Paul, but it, it's really only been in the last handful of years that it's really struck me at how extraordinary that was. Because in the moment, as I said, I was living in New York when I moved out to Los Angeles to start working on the series. And our cast just looked like New York. It looked and sounded like Manhattan. It was a melting pot of everybody, everything, all ages and colors and sizes and, you know. And you went to work and you, they were just, it didn't matter what color the purple person was, what ethnicity they were. They were just talented. There were people that were talented there and you didn't think about anything, but my God, these people are talented. And as you said, I am not worthy. <laughs> who is the most talented of you all? And I know, it's, I know you're going to say it's you, Paul, but who's the most talented of all the group? You mean, oh, but you know, that that's terrible that you would just say that, that you would think that I would say that I was the best one. <laughs> Probably was, but we won't mention it here. But there's, there's hands down, there's no Gene. question. Gene. Uh, Gene, Gene. Gene. <laughs> it's Gene, Gene, Gene. You know, there, there's. It's not just what you what what you got to see was then the what you know the take that got chosen and the edited you know end result. I often will say this because I it it still blows me away. So all week long I would be in dance rehearsal on Friday, which is the day we would always shoot the the production numbers because they could keep us there for sixteen or eighteen hours. Um, I'd be in rehearsal all week long and. Friday would come and I'd still be terrified because I was like going left and everybody else was going right. Gene Ray would skip the dance rehearsals all week long. He would get to set like 10 minutes before we were supposed to be on set. He'd throw his clothes on and he'd step aside with, you know, either Ursa or Marguerite, one of the dance captains. And they'd be like, okay, you know, like pop, pop, turn over my pop. He, he would do what's called marking it. He would mark it. Be like, hot, hot, yeah, pop, pop, top, 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 pop. And 
And then he'd go out and he'd do what you guys saw. Like with that much rehearsal, it was crazy. So it's not like how great he was when he was like how polished he was, but it was that he, it really was seemingly effortless. It, It wasn't fair is what it was because we all worked hard as anything. And he would just show up just like you said, you'd be like, how does this guy, how does he do it? It's just, it just, it oozes out of his pores, how talented and how great he was. He could sing, he could dance, he could act. And and it wasn't fair. I'm saying not fair, but he was a force of nature. Tell me about the show in September. I know there were three nights of the show. Um, and, and I guess at this stage, it probably hasn't been properly planned out and blocked off or whatever you actors call it. Um, but you'll have an idea. You know who the, the cast, I think there's about eight of you, um, going to be in the show. Uh, it's in Birmingham. Obviously, I'll give all the details at the end. But um, what, you, what are you anticipating? Uh, what, what, what are we going to see? Are we just going to see a collection of, a lot of songs in concert? Is it going to no, be dialogue? No, none of that chat? stuff. None of that. We're going to sit on stage and read poems. It's really going to be <laughs> a different take on everything this year. And, and we think it's going to be big. <laughs> Well, we can't disclose, not, we haven't made decisions about the entire set list yet, but um, it will be as fame and experience as possible. The songs will be mostly pulled from the show. Uh, we'll have the, um, the same dancers that backed us up last time, amazing, from the school in Liverpool. Um, LMA. LMA. So we'll have, we'll be collaborating with the LMA again. We'll be arriving early enough to, to go to LMA every day and rehearse. That's, they have, they have dance studio space. They've got the um, music studio spaces. So we'll have live rehearsals all week long before the show. And I'm hoping the LMA uh, choir is going to sing with us as well again. Oh God, I hope they sing. They're wonderful. They were amazing. Uh, and they're a perfect representation, right? I mean, they are, they're performing they're the full. They're, they're the next famers coming up. When I heard the song that you, you did, uh, Satellite, which was, I guess, to a certain extent, recorded, you know, from in separation, because first of all, you're all over the place and we had a pandemic and everything. Uh, I can't, I'm a bit of a softy, I can't deny that, but I, I, I had felt tears rolling down my eyes and I thought, this song is so perfect to represent you you people. Um, just just tell me how, what it meant to you to, to record that song and, and you know, how you, how you came with that song. You know, I had written that song with my, uh, with my songwriting, one of my songwriting partners, Ralph Stevens, in a band that I had. And I was just going to do something for myself and try and get some some people from the show to sing back up on it. And he heard the song that I wanted to do, and he goes, that's too depressing. Why don't we do Satellite? And I was like, oh, wow, that's a really good idea. And we, I started calling everybody, and every every person said, absolutely, I'll do it. And I asked I asked Val to direct it, and she was wonderful. And then everybody just put their time in. And I was very happy with the way it turned out. So... You can see it on YouTube still, the Friends of Fame satellite. Um, it, it was pretty special for me to, to get everybody back together again and to be able to do that.